cartel got me working for the big faces Federally got my car full of brick cases Hit the pen with a grin, there ain't no faking I was picked to my back for my shoelaces Got out, shoulda seen the look on they faces All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper Set up by the crew, they done put a banger In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there No thing, then attorney went and beat the case Got a job digging holes for minimum wage Had a dream that Kato said he proud of me Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing Quit the drugs, but you know I went back to selling Six times failing, I went back to prison Got my head right, got my bread right Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe Trying to do right, I got a mission Trying to give back to my boys in the prison The old me's gone, I ain't never... I, I was looking at his uh, uh, resume and I was like really taken back with everything you've done and, and seen, brother. I mean, you you've been you've been around the block. Yeah, I'm 62 years old, brother. And you know what? Uh, yes, I've been around the block. Uh, if I didn't know my age, I, I'd say I was 80 years old. You know, uh, in the flesh, but in the spirit, I'm two years old. And I'll talk about that. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean. I mean, you've been to Mexico, man. You've you've been around cartels. You've been around gangs. You, I mean, you've been you've been around the the enemy territory. <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. And by God's grace, I'm still here. Yes, by yes. God, God is good. God is good. So, were you were you a believer when you first started your career? I mean, how? First of all, I want to know how does a kid from the barrio end up? and deep in law enforcement like you did. <laughs> well, you know what, uh, uh, Julio? Uh, I grew up right next to a barrio, probably one of the worst barrios at that time in San Diego by the name of Old Time. I lived right next door to it. All my best friends, I used to go to their house, just all I would do is cross the street and I was there in Otay, you know? But I grew up in Chula Vista, right next door to it. I went to high school, junior high, with all the vatos in the barrio. And uh, I was always that kid growing up. You know, well, first of all, let me tell you, I grew up in an apostolic home. My father was the minister. My grandfather was a minister. My grandfather built the biggest apostolic or non-Catholic church in all of Mexico, in Tijuana. It was a huge church. And as a matter of fact, it was right next to a gym, a very famous gym called El Silvestre. And uh, when I was a kid, I mean, I've always lifted weights. I've always been into, you know, boxing and wrestling, whatever, football. And when my dad would go to preach at my grandfather's church, I used to go to Club Silvestre and lift weights. As a, and I'm talking about five years old, six, seven years old. But with that said, I, uh, ever since I was a little boy, I wanted to be a cop. I was that guy that was always defending back then they didn't have special ed programs yeah. so there was a lot of kids that didn't know how to read they were dyslexic and i'm talking in the 60s so they didn't know what dyslexia was and if they did in the barrios in the low income neighborhoods where i grew up we didn't have the teachers that would talk about dyslexia yeah. maybe in la jolla and other rich areas so i was always that kid that was teaching the kids how to read i wasn't a geek but I was that guy that when everybody was picking on Johnny, everybody was picking on Danny because he was a little slow. Da Danny and Johnny were part of my group. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yet at the same time, all the jocks and everybody else wanted to be part of my group. I was always a leader yeah. growing up. And uh, and and uh, so that's how I grew up. And I grew up in a, in a Christian home where my dad, I, I would see him pray. I would see him cry to the Lord. And then he became a pastor when I was 12 years old. And uh, it was during that time that then I started, you know, being junior high school, hanging around with the guys. My primos got involved in gangs and drugs. And I started seeing that world. But what held me back, number one, was my mother's prayers, my father's prayers. Number two, I always wanted to be a cop. So I never tried drugs because I knew that I was going to have a polygraph. I didn't know polygraph. Hey, at least, at least you to, keep it real. You know, I mean? you know, a lot yeah. of people say that they didn't know, but at least... At least you knew that that's what you wanted to be like as a kid. Yes, yes, at that time, that's what I wanted to be. When I was 13 years old, uh, I was gonna run away from home. And uh, because, you know, my dad was a 
church, church, church. I mean, when you grow up in an apostolic church, Pentecostal church, you're at church all day Sunday. You're at church Monday. You're at church Tuesday. You're at church Thursday. You're at church Saturday. You never have a day off. Maybe it's just a Friday. You know what I mean? And I just got fed up. Plus, I didn't have an experience with God. I grew up in it, but I didn't have an experience. When I was 13 years old, I was thinking of run. I was planning to run away from home, and that was going to be my last service uh, uh, there at the house. My abuelita was living in Long Beach. So I was going to get a bus and go to Long Beach. But I don't mean it also, but I was still going to do it at, <laughs> at uh, 13 years old, right? And I'm at church, and there's uh, my dad's preaching, and there's this man that all of a sudden jumps up and he sees a vision. And he yells out, I saw a vision that the world was burning, that God's hand came through the clouds and saved me. When I heard that, even though I had grown up in the church, I had never felt the spirit of the Lord. I saw people jumping, screaming, and glory, hallelujah, but I never felt anything. When I heard that, uh, Julio, God's spirit slayed me right there and then. I started weeping. And it wasn't because of what he said. It was because the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. And I gave my life to the Lord. I gave my, That night, I gave my life to the Lord. A week later, I was baptized. And I started living for God. And when I got back to uh, my junior high school, actually by now, yeah, junior high, uh, my father became a pastor at this church. So we moved to El Cajon, uh, which is like 30 miles from Chula Vista, where I grew up. A year and a half later, two years later we moved back to San Diego now I'm in the 10th grade now I'm on fire for the Lord I come back and I am preaching I'm walking around con una biblia así de grande you know what I mean <laughs> and I'm at school and everybody's going isn't that David because I mean I used to always fight in school so everybody knew that I mean I could defend myself and I was I was never a bully but I defended yeah. I fought against bullies so they would go wasn't that David the guy that used to beat up the bullies isn't that day and all of a so now I'm preaching the word of God in junior high school. I mean, in high school, I started off maybe with three Christians that were apostolic, that were from a local church called Otai. And by the time I left high school, there was probably about 30 of us. I, I would have Bible studies. I knew back then, Julio, all my friends were marihuanos. So I knew that they had the munchies, right? So my mom, I used to tell her, Ama, hágame su upside down cake. Porque estos marihuanos, I wouldn't even tell her they were marihuanos because she'd probably say, que no vengan, you know what I mean? So, so, so my mom would make me these upside down cakes on Wednesday nights, and I would invite one of my uh, good friends to come and get Bible studies. Dude, all these guys, they were there for the for the upside down cake. And now we're getting Yeah, but they would you know get I mean? Jesus at the end. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Out of that Bible study at our house, probably about 30 got baptized, yeah. gave their life God to the bless. Lord. And today, some of them are missionaries. Some of them are cops. Some of them are married. Some of them are millionaires. Some of them live in the park. It doesn't matter, but they're serving the Lord. They're brothers and sisters. Their kids are serving the Lord. So out of high school, God used me in a mighty way. So now I'm out of high school and I'm getting ready to graduate. I was that kid that always wanted to be a cop. So now I'm going to, I'm a senior. I'm going to talk to my counselor. His name was Doc, uh, Mr. Snow was my counselor. And I went in there to, he was, it was the last three or four months in career counseling. And I remember walking in and he goes, David, he had my file there in front of him. And he goes, uh, so I see here that you want to be a police officer because they can give us a wish list before. And I go, yes, sir. Dude, I didn't know any cops. My first experience with a Huda, with a cop, was I got my ass kicked by a cop. You know what I mean? And what happened, it's a football game, and I'm there watching uh, Castle Park against Sweetwater. It's a tight game, and there's fights everywhere. A big riot broke out between two barrios. But I'm there to watch the game. I'm 13 years old, or 12 years old, and the cops show up, sirens, helicopters. I mean, there's people getting stabbed everywhere, but I'm there to watch the game. And I remember it was a, a sheriff. They were a bunch of cops. They were moving everybody off the field because I was in the field watching the game. And I remember, Julio, that that, that cop told me something. And, you know, I, I wasn't paying attention because we were getting ready to score a touchdown. I'm like this. And that cop had a, a billy club, but it was a straight billy club. And he put it between his fingers and he hit me so hard in my soloplex here, my soloplex, that I fell to the ground, 12 years old. 
and I'm laying there and I can't breathe and I think I'm going to die and people are yelling and not because I'm down because everybody else is getting clobbered you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I remember holding my breath and looking at that cop thinking I will never be that cop I swear to God I'm sitting there I'm laying I, I can't breathe I mean you know what it is to get the solar flare and I'm like I can't breathe and I'm looking at him well that that mark stayed on me for six months I mean that's how hard I'm surprised he didn't break uh, my, my my ribs or my solar plex but it stayed with me for six months so every time I remember when I was a kid I'd look at the mirror I would look at the big mark right here on my chest and I would go you know what I will never be that cop so now I'm 18 years getting ready to graduate from high school I'm 17 years old I'm talking to my counselor and he looks at my grades and he looks at my paperwork and he goes I see here that your dad is a construction worker my dad was construction he goes you know he goes, you would be a great, a great uh, uh, labor. And I looked at him, I go, I want to be a police officer. He goes, well, no, I think you should be a labor. And no disrespect to the labors, you know what I mean? No disrespect to the construction workers, my respect for them. I didn't want to be a construction worker. I wanted to be a police officer, but I didn't know anybody. In the barrio, nobody was a cop, right? So I'm looking at him and he goes, I, you should be, a, you need to be a labor. You, you, you can't be a police officer. I'll tell you, Julio, I remember, you know, like you see those movies of, you know, that you walk out and your balloon is down and you're walking like, woo, woo, like that. I swear, I, I go back right now in my mind where I'm walking home. I can still see myself. I'm not crying. 17 years old. I'm a Chicano, real proud, but I am broken. You know, I still had the Lord and I was preaching everybody, but my dream wasn't tangible anymore because this man broke it you know what i mean so i'm walking and i'm walking home and i remember just thinking i mean i was out of breath just what am i gonna do now you know but god had a different plan god had a different plan so